I'd like to welcome you to Leap into Embroidery with Embroidery Software and EmbroideryDesigns.com. EmbroideryDesigns.com is your one-stop shop for all things embroidery with more than 800,000 distinct embroidery files. We also sell fonts, threads, stabilizers, and much more. I'm Debbie Cleek, and I'll be your host today as we delve into the Embroidery Software. I'm so glad you could join me. In today's event, we're going to review the most powerful features of the Embroidery line of software. What would an event be without specials? We have those too. 10% of all embroidery, Embrilliant Embroidery products with coupon code LEAP22. Free access to all the educational materials pre-recorded on Embrilliant's YouTube channel. 50 free embroidery designs and 10 free Embrilliant's BX fonts. We're going to start with Thumbnailer. We're going to move to Essentials, Enthusiasts, Alpha Tricks, and Finish Strong with Density Repair Kit. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. As I said, we're going to start out with Thumbnailer, and we can't do that without me pointing out these little thumbnails on my desktop. These little thumbnails happen to be embroidery designs, which were put there by Thumbnailer. Yes, I'm viewing thumbnails of my embroidery designs in Windows Explorer. So that means if I want to open these in in Brilliance Essentials, I can open in Brilliance Essentials and know exactly where to go to get what design I want to work with. I can also view designs in folders and to adjust the view of my designs. I have here in my window at the top, I have a view menu which allows me to select the size of the thumbnail I want to view. I can go to extra large. I can go to small. Those are too small, but I find large icons to be just right. Okay, so that is the one job that Thumbnailer does. It does very, very well as it allows you to see thumbnails of your designs on your desktop, in folders, just anywhere you have designs in Windows Explorer. If I go to Downloads, any designs that I've downloaded, it's going to, it's going to go to my View menu. Any designs that I've downloaded, it's going to show me automatically. In my downloads folder. So anywhere in your computer where you download and save your designs, you can view them using via Windows Explorer and Thumbnailer. Now there's also Let's close one of these. There's also a control panel for a thumbnailer. And to view the designs in thumbnailer, you can either select all, select none, and then select the ones you want to view. I like to work with select all, that way I don't have to be so selective, I don't have to think about the ones, because I know I want to view quilting files. And I know I want to view the other files because I do have a digital cutter and I do sometimes cut my embroidery fabric or my applique fabric with my digital cutter. So I want to be able to view my SVG files. And depending on which digital cutter you have, there's a number of formats that coordinate with those digital cutters. And I know that even though I use PES format for my embroidery, I may want to use an EXP file and convert it to a PES file so I can embroider it on my machine. Okay, so you just never know. I always opt for the more the merrier and select all of them so I don't miss anything that I may want to embroider that comes in a different format that I can easily convert, convert in Essentials to my format. Okay, over here, 
there's a number of boxes that are very helpful. Um, the about box, I'm not going to open that because my serial number is in there, but in the about box is also where you're going to find your um, version of your Embrilliance thumbnail or software, as well as the date of your version. If you ever have to send a ticket in to the support team for Embrilliance, it's always very helpful to include your version as well as your version date. It helps them get a, a quick, quicker picture of what you have and what could be causing your problem. So that's found under the About box. You can also view a PDF of the manual that's built in for Thumbnailer for Windows. It's about 15 pages long. So it's an easy print and it's got some very helpful information. Even if you don't print it, I would recommend you browse through it and see what's in there. You never know. You might, you might learn something. You might find, you might find that you have a question answered you didn't know you had. It's just always a good idea to read any kind of information like that. It's always good to at least browse through it so you kind of know ballpark where to go for certain information when, when a question does arise. Okay, if you still can't see files, so if you've downloaded your thumbnailer and can't see your files, check for updates. Sometimes there will be an update that will take place that maybe um, has been posted since your last installation. So check for updates. Like I said, you'll find the version of your program under the about. So you'll always be able to know what version you have. So when you check for updates and it's the same as what you have in about, you know your current. And then you can reset your links. That's just a simple click. And what that does is it checks your communication between your Windows Explorer and your embroidery files and helps tie those together a little better so you're able to see your thumbnails. Okay? So that is Thumbnailer. Like I said, it does one thing. And it does one thing very, very well, and that is to allow you to see your thumbnails in Windows Explorer. Now would be a good time. Well, let's open the... Uh, and Brilliance Demo and go to Essentials. But now would also be a good time to tell you about the specials we have. 10% off of all in Brilliance products with coupon LEAP22. Free access to the pre-recorded educational content. 50 free embroidery designs and 10 free in Brilliance BX fonts with any in Brilliance purchase. Let's go to Essentials and see what we can find to talk about there. I'm sure there'll be plenty. Let's see. Let's first go in. One of the things that Essentials does and does very, very, very well is sizing. So let's come in here and bring in an embroidery design. So we'll go to Merge Stitch File because we're bringing in an embroidery design. Go to my demo designs. Go to this little butterfly here. Select it. It's 10,640 odd stitches. So I'm going to hold down my stitch, my shift key. That's going to keep my design in the center of my hoop as I size it. Just to let you know, that's a nice little tip. To, you might want to jot that down. Holding down your shift key while you're sizing keeps your design in the center. That was brought to my attention by a very dear friend of mine. So I try to share it whenever possible. So with Essentials, you can size down 50% and it recalculates your stitches. That's the important part, is it recalculates your stitches, which means it doesn't just take those 16,040-odd stitches and cram them into a smaller space. It actually redigitizes the design as it sizes down and removes the stitches necessary to make the design that size. Now, when I say redigitize, I don't mean it recreates the design. 
it just does a process where it eliminates the design the stitches that aren't necessary for a design the size you're trying to make it okay the same thing is true when i size up it will allow me to size up up to 250%. And again, it will recalculate those stitches as I am sizing my design. Very important to remember that. Recalculate your stitches because not all sizing software does that. And not all sizing software allows the broad breadth of sizing that essentials allows 50% down and 250% up is a pretty broad um, distance or pretty broad array of sizing. We also have, which I love, love, love is the fit to hoop button. What that allows you to do is fit your design to fill your hoop with one click, recalculate your stitches as it does it, Sizes at the maximum allowable size to fill that hoop. So I have the 8 by 8 hoop displayed on my design page. So it's going to size my design 213%, which is the maximum allowable size to fill the 8 by 8 hoop. Okay. If I wanted to size this manually and put in a size, input a size, I can do that here in these boxes. I can type in the size that I want. I can go from millimeters from metric to inches. If you want precision, try to become familiar with metric. That's where you're going to get the most precision in your sizing. Okay, let's see. The next thing we need to talk about in essentials, let's size this down a little bit. Let's copy this design and let's paste it. Okay, now I have two butterfly, actually two butterfly designs on my design page. I'm going to go to edit and select all. And then I'm going to go to the remove hidden stitches tool in my tool pane. Now, if you're watching the stitches down at the bottom of my system tray, you'll see that it's gone down to 23,270 odd stitches. Let's see what that removed. Oh my gosh, it removed the second butterfly. Just what I needed to happen. Okay, if I decide I want to move it somewhere else, maybe I want to delete the butterfly here or delete the underneath of the top butterfly. Edit, select all, remove hidden stitches. And it removed those stitches in the butterfly's wing. Remove hidden stitches is a very amazing and powerful tool, folks. Not many pieces of software, I don't believe, have a, a truly, a true remove hidden stitches tool like we have. That removes those hidden stitches. Okay, the next thing we need to talk about is fonts and create working with BX fonts. What BX fonts are is a font wrapped up in an installer that allows those that allows those letters, that font, to install itself into the program, into your font list and become a keyboard font where you can type with your keyboard as opposed to bring in each independent individual letter independently. Okay, it's quite the time saver. 
as you'll see here in just a moment, I'm going to get a new design page. I'm going to minimize this. Let's just move it down a little bit. Open my demo designs, go to my BX files. Let's move this down a bit. Let's grab the one and a half inch. One and a half inch, Tiana one and a half inch has been installed. Click OK. Minimize that. Let's go back up here, put my box back where it belongs. And there it is. And you notice I have all of the tools available. I can slant this. I can adjust my spacing. I can curve the top. I can curve the bottom. I can adjust my sewing order. And I can make a specialty monogram. The thing that I really like about these tools is I can very quickly and easily go back to zero with all the changes that I've made. Okay, with the utility menu, I have the ability to base my design, which is adding a basting stitch around my file to hold it. A lot of people are allergic to, allergic to spray adhesives. A lot of people like to save the environment and don't like to use a lot of spray adhesives. And there's a lot of reasons why people just don't like to use spray adhesives. So to secure your fabric to your stabilizer, you can add a base file, which is easily removable, that will, that will secure your fabric to your stabilizer that is found under the utility menu. Okay. So let's see, we talked about remove hidden stitches. We talked about the BX file. We talked about sizing. We didn't talk about our promotions again. We didn't talk about our 10% off All In Brilliance products with the coupon code LEAP22. Okay? So let's see. Let's talk real quick and then we'll move on to the next. Let's get a new page. Or better yet, let's go back to these initial two butterflies. I have these two butterflies here. Okay, let's just get rid of that window. I can bring it back and I'll show you how to bring it back. Okay, and if you notice the stitches one through 15 and then two through 15 for each of these designs, what I wanna do is color sort these and that comes, color sort first shows its head in essentials. So I am going to go to utility and color sort and it was reduced by 15 colors. Let's, sele let's um, select new view. And now when I look at this, I have one through 15, now one through 15 and two through 15. So let's combine each of the colors. So when it stitches color number one, it'll stitch butterfly one and butterfly two. When it stitches color number two, it'll stitch butterfly one and butterfly two. When it stitches color number three, so on and so forth. Okay. So that is color sort.
So now that we've gone over a number of things in essentials, let's move over to enthusiasts. There we can talk about a number of fun features in there. Carousel, instant repeat, um, knockdown stitches, a number of things in there. So I'm going to close this out. I'm going to click on my demo button. I'm going to remove my check mark from essentials and go to enthusiasts. Click OK. And here we have Embrilliance Enthusiasts. The hero of this program is this little button right here. And under my utility menu, add knockdown stitching. We will talk about both of those as well as these guys down here. So I'm going to go to File. Merge stitch file. We're going to bring these butterflies in again. I'm going to zoom in on them just a little bit. I'm going to select my stitch edit tool. This tool is the tool you use to edit stitches. So when I click on that, my design automatically turns into stitch points, design embroidery stitch points. I'm going to use the freehand select tool and I'm going to remove or move this butterfly. I'm going to use the split the stitches into a new design. I'm going to select this design. I'm going to right click on it and copy it. Go to a new design page and paste it. Now I've just created a new design. Now I'm going to delete these stitches because maybe I just want this one big butterfly but I don't need this little gray right here. So I'm going to select, make sure my stitch edit tool is activated and click on my brush select. And then I can come over here and I can select these stitches. Simply by brushing over them. Okay, let's take these guys. And just rectangle select them. There we go. Now I've got just a single butterfly. If I wanted to remove the antenna, if I wanted to slice this butterfly in half, Whatever I wanted to do with this butterfly, I can do it with my Stitch Edit tool. Okie doke. Let's get a new design page. Let's get some lettering. And let's go to our View menu, Toolbars, and windows and bring back our properties window. There we go, because we're going to need it for lettering. I'm going to use open airy. I'm going to change the color.
Let's see if I can find that color quickly. Yes. Just another one of the many little secret hidden features, and I'm going to delete these colors. Well, maybe not. Oh, it looks like they've got some kind of outline or something going on there. Anyway, we're just going to pretend like that green stitching isn't there, and I'm going to take this light and airy font that I want to stitch on a terry cloth towel that I know once it's washed the first time, all these little thin areas here will just completely disappear in the nap of the terry cloth. So I'm going to come here to my utility, add knockdown stitching, leave everything at default because if it's not broke, I'm not going to fix it. And I'm just stitching on a towel. And that's basically what these default settings were designed for. Stitching on towel, stitching on um, polar fleece, stitching on um, micro fleece. And there we have our knockdown stitching. Change it to the color of my towel. Let's see, what color are my towels? There we go. Okay. So that is knockdown stitching. Let's try a different font. Let's get another new page. Let's go to a different font that doesn't have all that other color. Romance Bean Script. Let's try that. You see, this did a little bit differently. This gave me one solid block of stitching as opposed to the other one giving me three different, three independent for the letters because of the spacing between the letters. So it just all depends. If you had a monogram that's all intertwined and close together, you're just going to get one block of the underlaying knockdown stitches. Okay. So that is knockdown stitching. So we've talked about the stitch editing. We've talked about knockdown stitching. Let's get a new design page and talk about some of those things in the utility menu. Let's talk about instant repeat for starters. Let's bring a design in, go to file, merge stitch file, demo designs, Let's see how small this design is. Perfect. I'm going to move it up here in the corner. I'm going to go to my utility menu. I'm going to go to instant repeat. Here I can tell it how many across I want to have that design. I can tell it how much space I want between that design. And I can tell it how many rows down I want and how much space I want between the vertical rows. I can stagger my rows. I can stagger my columns. I can flip every other one. Or I can mirror them.
nifty little thing if you want to make some all over embroidered fabric. Imagine if you had a teeny little ladybug and wanted to make a ladybug inset panel for a denim bag. How cute would that be? Okay, so the click OK. This is ready to go to utility color sort. And so, let's see which one is next. Mirror times four. Let's go to file. Oh, let's go to a new page. We'll get a new page. We'll go to file. We'll go to merge stitch file. Demo design. I'm going to bring in the motorcycle for this one. I'm going to put it up here at this corner. I'm going to go to utility, mirror times four. And there we go. We've got four motorcycles. Imagine if I wanted to put a monogram in the middle there or a name or a phrase. A nickname. I can adjust my horizontal gap. I can adjust my vertical gap. I can adjust my angle. Maybe that's what I want. And again, color sort this and you're ready to stitch it. Where did we talk about color sort? In essentials. Okay, next we're going to talk about carousel. And we're going to go back here to this butterfly to do that. We're going we're gonna to talk about this butterfly for a little while here because we're going to take it to utility and we're going to use it in carousel where I can increase the number of butterflies that are around this circle. I can rotate them. I can rotate them all. And I can rotate them individually. I can invert every other one. I can auto rotate them or leave them all the way the first one was when I brought it in. I like them auto rotated. And I like them rotate about like that. Click OK. You're ready to go. OK, let's undo this. Let's take this little butterfly one more time. And let's go to scatter. Move my box over to the side. Now, the width and height is the size of your embroidery frame. Your auto rotate, I can auto rotate these or not. I can random mirror them or not. I like to auto rotate and to random mirror. I can adjust my minimum size, make it bigger or smaller. I think it goes down to 50. I can adjust my maximum size. And I can adjust my spacing, which is how close together or how far apart my butterflies are. If I don't like this random pattern, I can click on new pattern. Till I find one that I like. Okay, are we all following along? I hope so. We've just covered some pretty powerful, pretty fun features there.
And now is also a good time to remind you of the, the specials we have. 10% off of all Embrilliance products with, Embr with coupon code LEAP22. Free access to all the educational content. 50 free embroidery designs and 10 free Embrilliance BX fonts with the purchase of any Embrilliance product. So, what am I going to buy? Hmm. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go on to the next program, which is going to be Alphatrix. Let's color sort this first, though. Just to show you how powerful color sort, so color sort is, it reduces design by 108 color changes. Let's take it to a new view. Nine color changes. Not so bad at all. Okay, let's close this. We're not saving any of those. So remember in Enthusiast, we covered what? Stitch editing. Knockdown stitches. And then all the fun stuff, the instant repeat, carousel, scatter, and mirror times four. Now we're going to talk about alpha tricks. And to talk about alpha tricks, let's go to the little ABC here in the toolbar. Would you like to begin importing a font? I'm going to tell it no, because the first thing I want to talk about is the value of alpha tricks in renaming your files. If you have a lot of files that you've brought in, either via BX or through Alphatrix, um, mapping them to your keyboard manually, and when I show you that manually, you're going you're gonna to chuckle because it's not very hard and it's not very manual. But sometimes you want to organize those, maybe put all your same size together or all your script, the script fonts together or all your childlike fonts together. There's a number of ways you could determine or decide to organize them. It just all depends on how you use them. But to change the uh, name of those so you can begin your organization process, you would just swipe this to highlight it. A, B, C, one, two, three. That's going to be my new name. And in the purchase version of Alpha Tricks, I would have a save button right here. I would click that, save my font, and it would now be named A, B, C, one, two, three, which would put it pretty far up at the top of the list. So I could do A, B, C, Two, three, four, A, B, C, three, four, five, A, B, C, four, five, six. And they would all fall in sequential order then. I could even just do A, B, C, one, A, B, C, two, A, B, C, three, A, B, C, four. Okay. So that is how you rename a font in Alphatrix. Now let's talk about how to import a font. So let's click on the new font button. Let's go to our demo designs. Oh. Let's go to our teeny tiny narrow greeting card font. And I'm going to bring in the one inch size. I'm going to kind of scroll through here to make sure that I have all my characters and see what kind of order they're in. Okay, it looks like they're all there. So I'm going to select all. 
You click import. And I'm going to scroll through my list here again, make sure I have, oh, great. I have uppercase, lowercase a, uppercase, lowercase b, so on and so forth. That is wonderful because that means that I can map these letters automatically using one of the magic map buttons that I have. Okay, and I need to take all the letters that have descenders and drop them down below the baseline. Q, P, and G. That should just about do it. Okay, now here comes the magic part. I can use these magic buttons up here to automatically map this font without having to touch a key on the keyboard. So the, the numbers are zero to nine, so I can use this magic button here, zero to nine. Make sure I have zero selected, zero to nine. Now the ABC, make sure I have A selected, then I have uppercase A, lowercase A, uppercase Z, lowercase Z. So I have that magic button so I can automatically map the letters. And there I've mapped that font. Now this particular font happens to have some additional punctuation, additional characters. Those I will have to touch the keyboard for. But just real simply, ampersand, parentheses, at sign, colon, comma, dash, dollar sign, exclamation, parentheses, percentage sign, period, hashtag, question mark, quotation marks, semicolon, and backslash. And if you notice, above each of the letters is the character it's mapped to. So if you've made a mistake or if you see a mistake, it's not a big deal. You can just select that letter and type the corresponding letter on your keyboard. Maybe this isn't a dash, maybe it's an underscore. I can select that letter and make the change on my keyboard. And then again, there would be a save button right here where I would save this font. Okay. I, call, I like to call these my magic buttons because they do make short work out of mapping your fonts. And most digitizers, they, they do their fonts in certain orders repetitiously. We find that most either do A to Z uppercase, A to Z lowercase, A to Z upper lower, or A to Z upper lower. Okay, you can also map monograms. Here's your monogram button, so you can map your center letter, your left and your right letter. And you can also tell it where to sit on the baseline, bottom, center, or top. In most monograms, you're going to want them to sit in the center of the baseline. 
as opposed to the bottom because you're going to want them to be your left and right letters to be center uh, sent to be centered to your center letter okay if you can picture that your center letter would be your large letter and then your smaller letters are going to want to be centered top and bottom to that letter Okay, and remember there'll be questions, there'll be time for questions at the end of this presentation. And don't forget, 10% off all Embrilliance products with coupon code LEAP22. And then all the goodies you get with that. The designs, the free access, and the free fonts, okay? Let's see, that is thumbnailer, I mean, I'm sorry, that is Alpha Tricks and what it does and what it does very, very good. Now let's look at Density Repair Kit. And in my mind, I saved the best for last. because Density Repair Kit has some really, really fabulous features. I'm going to go to File. I'm going to go to Merge Stitch File. I'm going to go to my Demo Designs. And I'm going to bring in the tractor. Now the first thing about Density Repair repair kit that I want to talk to you about is the density map. I don't think that most people that have density repair kit use the density map the way they should or they use it as often as they should. I tend to use it anytime I bring in a design that I'm going to stitch and not have to do anything to it. I'm not going to size it. I'm not going to add any text. I'm not going to do anything to it at all. I'm not going to size it. I bring it in and I look at the density map and I see what the percentages or correlation is between the red and the blue, blue being least dense, red being most dense. And this right here, when I zoom in on it a little bit here, I can see the red is the treads on the tire and where my satin stitches and things meet up which is not too bad. This design is really, while you see some red, this is really not a bad design. This design would stitch and stitch very, very well because in order to have the depth and texture you want to have in your design, nobody, will, nobody likes flat embroidery. And if that were the case, you would just put heat transfer vinyl on everything and leave it flat. The whole point of adding embroidery is to add texture So adding, adding um, some layers to your embroidery helps add that texture to your designs. Now we click on it again and we're going to get a wire line view. And that's going to help us see more, more precisely where our thread is going to stitch, where we're going to get stitching and where we're not going to get stitching where we're going to get the layers and where we're not going to get the layers more precisely. Okay. So that's using the density map. Now I'm going to take this design. I'm going to control. I'm going to right click copy. And right click paste. And I'm going to have two of these designs and I'm going to look at them in the density map. And oh my God, now that is a problem design that has way too much red. The red is not just little speckles of red like it was before. This red is full on solid red areas. So for that, we're going to use our 
clean up stitches button or our sweep. And there we go, back to normal. Let's go to our wireline preview, see if I can move that that way. No, let's go to our regular preview. And see it's removed everything but those couple little stitches. So now this is up, oh, it's undone for what? There we go. Clean up stitches works the same way as remove hidden stitches. Once you let it go and you move it, it regenerates those stitches. So once you and, and once you use that tool, it will generate that tool on your way to saving that design and remove those hidden stitches. It will perform that sweep. How do I know that? Because right here on my stitches tab, I have all these filters that it will use automatically. Now, if I don't want it to sweep that design, I'll click a check mark here to prevent the sweep when I save the design. But I'm going to want this design to stitch as good as, as best as it can when I stitch it, because I'm going to stitch it on a little t shirt for my grandson, Jasper. He likes tractors and dinosaurs. Not in that order, but that's what he likes. So I'm going to want to make sure that I use all my filters, use the automatic settings, which is going to do everything on the way out the door. And I save this design and make all the necessary changes. So this will stitch nice on his t-shirt. And just in case, just a little commercial out there. If you haven't used that um, undercover, I forget what it's called, but the backing that you can stitch on your, you can embroider the backing that you can iron on the back of your embroidered designs. Now would be a good time to pick some of that up along with some of these embroidered designs because that can be kind of itchy on the chest for a little guy. I know Jasper doesn't like it when I stitch on this t-shirt and don't put that backing on it. It's just a smooth backing that covers the stitches. It doesn't really add any weight or anything else to the design. It just covers the stitches. Makes it nice and smooth on his little tummy. So, density repair kit. What else do we need to talk about? We need to talk about the project advisor because now it is no longer the project advisor. It also has a set project now. So if I wanted to sew this on that leather jacket, maybe, maybe I bought uh, Jasper a little leather vest and I want to put a John Deere tractor on the back of it. Heck with all that biker stuff. He's a tractor kid. I want to put a tractor on the back of it. Of course, it would probably be a faux leather vest because he's growing like a weed. But anyway, I digress. I would select my fabric, being leather, and I would set my project, and it's going to make whatever changes necessary to that design. <clears throat> so it will stitch wonderfully on leather or vinyl. Okay? So that is it for density repair kit. Don't forget to use your density map. Don't forget to use your clean up stitches tool. Don't forget to use your set project for your project advisor to make quick, simple changes to a design all with one click. Okay. Let's review real quick what we talked about. Let's close this up. Let's go back to our little box here. We talked about essentials and sizing, removing hidden stitches and working with the BX fonts. We talked about enthusiasts, 
and we talked about the stitch editor. We talked about carousel, uh, mirror times four, scatter, and instant repeat. Okay, we talked about alpha tricks. We talked about renaming fonts. And we talked about importing fonts and how easy it is to use those magic buttons to uh, map your font automatically. And finally, we talked about density repair kit. And don't forget to use your uh, density map. Don't forget to use your cleanup stitches. And don't forget to use your project, your project advisor. Okay. I hope this has been fun and educational for you. I hope you've learned something. I hope you've seen something that you just got to have. I would like to take this time to thank all of you for attending and remind you once again of the specials, 10% off of all in Brilliance products with coupon code LEAP22. That's LEAP22. You have access to free access to all the pre-recorded educational content. You would re you'll receive 50 free embroidery designs with purchase of Embroidance products, as well as 10 free Embroidance fonts with the purchase of Embroidance products. So again, I'd like to thank you for taking your time. I hope you follow along with us as we move along in this series to go through Stitch Artist. We'll cover Stitch Artist in levels one, two, and three. It's going to be a must-see event, and I hope you join us for that as well. Thank you so much for your time, and hope you have a great day.